Good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting us to, to be here. That's a great opportunity. And uh, uh, first I'll give a, a brief overview what is our thought and who we are and wh wh why we are doing what we are doing. And then uh, provide uh, some uh, information on the, our first interim product release. And uh, then what's next? Because this version 0.1 is just the tip of the iceberg, so we have uh, a lot of work still ongoing. And then I'll also tell you how you can join us if you'd like. So as was mentioned yesterday, uh, we need to meet some quality requirements uh, for data if you want to transform this data into knowledge. The focus uh, of ACCOD currently is on subsurface ocean temperature, and this variable is both an uh, essential ocean variable and an essential climate variable. So one of the challenges we are facing today is climate change. And climate change is also a big challenge for the observations as it, it requires uh, the highest quality standard possible. So if we meet uh, the quality standards for climate studies and research and services, we will be meeting all the other requirements for other application of this data. So um, the problem is that we have this uh, big world ocean database uh, with a variety of instruments, and not all of them have the same um, quality, uh, particularly climate quality. And these measurements were largely uh, undertaken for various purposes. So and without coordination, it's really hard uh, to know whether you're applying the most efficient quality control methods, and it also happens a lot of uh, duplication efforts. So you probably know people that get the data from the World Ocean Database, move it to your country, and then apply your quality control, and then release uh, the data with a different brand, and, and so on. So this happens everywhere. So we, we, we decide to get together all these uh, different groups and, and try to join forces to provide uh, the best quality and consistency, consistent and complete uh, World Ocean Database possible. And this includes uh, inclusion of uh, intelligent metadata, I'll explain shortly, and uncertainties. And we can only do this through truly international coordination and focusing all the resources and expertise into a single best practice community effort. And our activities so far have been uh, supported by uh, Cliver, uh, IOD, and SCAR. And we have been endorsed by some other uh, communities from the modeling side, like the Godet, community and the uh, climate modeling community as well. But we don't have funding. Everything we've been doing is on a volunteer basis and working extra nights and weekends largely. So we yeah, are a very dedicated team, like many of us here. And um, in terms of uh, who we are, at the moment we have, uh, uh, we represent 17 nation members. Uh, we have a structure, co-chairs, steering committees, and task teams. And here at this uh, conference, we have um, Toru, Christine, Ruik, uh, Roger, and Sam, Simona, uh, myself, and I hope I didn't miss anybody else. Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe one, somebody here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't see. And um, so how we work. We work uh, with a diversity of uh, people from the data side and also from the user side. And we're very close together. 
So this is just a general workflow. So we have um, the input data set and we develop software tools and then we apply automated uh, quality control and we also have expert uh, quality control and then we, we get uh, our version and then we go through the loop until we, we kind of reach a, a, a standard. We are mostly focused, while most, uh, most people are largely focused on the era post-Argo, yeah, the modern era, we are mostly focused in the pre-Argo era because we would like to put this data in the best shape possible. So for instance, for climate change, we need to understand what has been happening in the past to put in perspective the present and, and future changes. And also to separate what is natural climate variability from what is human-induced um, factors. So, and we need to work out uh, a lot in this part of the, the historical era. Um, as I said before, this is a, a iCloud version 0.1 that was released early this year. Uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg from what we are doing. And it only includes, we haven't touched the data per se at the moment. We only have added flags. And these flags are, are for the intelligent metadata, uh, for uncertainty, mostly random errors, and uh, we have been working on the format to be um, consistent with Argo floats data. And at the moment, the data has been released at uh, in, in the US NSCI, but uh, we are working to have it released in different, in other websites as well, as you see here. And here is just uh, an example of what um, the how you can download the data from NCI. So in this page you have the documentation tab, and you can uh, get information of all the details we have done to the data uh, flags. And then here's how to cite the data and other information. And in terms of downloading the data, you have uh, some options here, a thread, um, HTTP download, and also FTP. And then, then uh, the format is NetCDF4, regular array. And if you go to the credit tab, you see that there's a lot of people that have worked to get just this uh, first interim product available. So um, now is the more exciting part that uh, the work we are go, go, being done, uh, that's being done to release uh, a new version where we are going actually to start uh, having coordinate quality control applied. So in terms of format, at the moment we are uh, improving this. This is uh, some of the minor chains we are applying already. And, uh, and this is, uh, being done because we got feedback from the data simulation community. So anybody that uses the data and would like to give us feedback to improve in certain aspects, you are very welcome. Uh, for the duplicates, uh, we have flagged the exact duplicates and we would like to implement Guillaume May's um, algorithm. It's a machine learning algorithm to, to make uh, the detection uh, more efe uh, efficient and the intelligent metadata. Uh, we are moving from a deterministic approach to a probabilistic approach and also using narrow neural networks. And we are tackling initially the instruments that are related to XPT measurements. And in terms of uncertainty, with all this information on the I metadata uh, refine, we can also refine the uncertainty errors. So what is the, the I metadata? A large fraction of the historical data set uh, comes from an instrument called XPT, and they 
they are subject to bias. And when they were uh, put in the global database, many of them uh, lack uh, metadata. And as you can see, all these red um, patterns here uh, denotes that uh, where we have XPT profiles, but we don't have the metadata. So why is it important to understand the, the metadata? Because we need to correct bias. Uh, from the expertise and that can affect uh, climate uh, studies. So, and what is the approach we are taking to, to tackle this big problem? So Matt Palmer uh, built on, on what Beck Colley has uh, done to, to figure out um, how can we add a bit more information for the missing metadata. So, and the approach is mostly on an exclusion basis. So they, they work out which expertise, XPT types, there are several types, and depending on these three, uh, they, they can work out which expertise that uh, profile cannot be from. And so reduces the, the chance of uh, assigning uh, a bias correction to a different XPT type that is not uh, available at the time. And it starts with a deterministic approach, like this tree, but uh, they are now testing neural net networks to work on this problem of the iMetadata. And uh, preliminary results show uh, significant improvements already from the, the deterministic approach. And uh, they are also testing different uh, machine learning uh, algorithms to see what is best to, to go forward. Um, and so, and then uh, they can also generate like a probabilistic approach uh, uh, and to, 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 to get the, a range of uh, possibilities rather than saying yes or no. And then they will test uh, how, uh, how much difference this does to global ocean heat content rates. In terms of the auto QC, uh, they have, the, uh, Simon Good and Bill Mills have developed a framework and they have gathered about 55 different auto QC tests so far. So if you have uh, automated quality control methods and you'd like to have it benchmarked with everybody else, please uh, contact us as well and we can, can, can help and investigate that and also we'll provide us feedback on how we can um, make auto QC more efficient. So here um, are some preliminary results. So all these panels around the, the, the big panel are from different uh, auto QC from different groups and how they tag uh, a reference data set. So uh, you can see there are differences. And now Simon and B are kind of developing um, the um, a flagging system and the best approach because I think overall I, I'm, I'm not I'm an oceanographer I don't I'm not much sure I don't have deep knowledge of the, the QC but the overall idea of this is to get the, the QC sets that uh, perform best in terms of um, picking up all the good data but not picking up uh, bad data or not flagging good data as bad. So optimizing all the auto QC tests. And they still have further work to do. And uh, one of the, the, the problems at the moment, there are some profiles that they know that are bad because uh, it's a reference data set. And none of the tests are picking up those bad data. So uh, they want to understand why. This is one of the things that pop up when they were doing the test. So they will do further investigations. And then in terms of the expert QC, uh, Guy Castellan ha has 
is developing actually uh, a web-based approach that anybody in different places in different countries, uh, any other experts, let's suppose they, they're expert on that ocean region, they can jump there and pick up the profiles from that region and do the expert QC. And everything that you, you're doing is going to be uh, logged on the background. And then uh, it's going to fit, this, is, this information is going to fit also a machine learning algorithms that will have to reduce the work for experts, but also uh, help to train them. So this is a bit of what is here. I'm trying to be short. So, but if you want any details or if you want to join these activities in terms of machine learning or have regional expertise, please come and talk to us. And everything we are doing is uh, documented in, in GitHub. So you have all the data sets there, all the software tools, all the codings, and the, the guys are, are doing mostly in Python. And we use Slack to communicate between each other as well, because we are everywhere. And uh, at the moment, the, our web page is being revamped. And, but uh, on the GitHub web page, you can also find our workshop reports, if you are interested in learning a bit more in detail what I've been doing. So, and finally, if you'd like to join us, we would like uh, to welcome you because we want to grow the team and the diversity of the team. And I have listed here uh, our task team leaders and the different task teams we have at the moment. And you can contact us by email and you can contribute to this effort in many different ways. Uh, and I have listed some other the ways you can uh, contribute particularly by using the data and giving us feedback and spreading the word about ICOR. Uh, and as you can see, we still have a lot of uh, ground to cover. And I guess most of you must be around Europe. So uh, we have a gap there. And it would be great to, to, to get more people from Europe as well. And so thank you.